mean, I guess you're not long back from your most recent exploit. Yes, I ran the coast to coast or, or part of the problem with that route is no, no one decides on the proper name for it because it's not a, yeah, it's not a national trail or a great walk. Um, yeah, Wainwright's coast to coast is what most people call it. Um, about 185 miles, um, basically one side of the country to the other. Um, St. St. B's to Robin Hood's Bay, which I... That's walked... east, east to west, right? Uh, west to east, sorry. West to east, sorry, yeah, west yeah, yeah. East. So you finished um, through the Lake District, or mostly through the Lake District? No, sorry, other way. So west, like start in the west, go to the east. So Lake District's in the west. Um, yeah, yes. Yeah. Can go either way, but that's the that's the sort of classic. Yeah, classic, classic way. way. And and I guess if, yeah, if you're going for a record, which I was, I suppose there's some debate. You know, whether do you get the hills and the fells in early, um, so they're not going to slow you up later on. But of course, your legs are. Uh, your legs might be feeling it a bit. Um, so it'd be interesting to see if anyone goes, I've heard one or two rumours, maybe people trying from the other way to see if, you know, the faster, flatter running early on. Um, but yeah, that's a good, that's a good route. And, and it ties in nicely. I mean, a bit like you, I, I've got a background in both, both hike, long distance hiking. Well, before I, you know, before I was a runner. So I did hike that about sort of 15 years ago or something. And it's really nice to go back as a runner and experience it a different way. Um, and it takes a lot less time, um, <laughs> but obviously you often don't see as much, of course, because you run through the night and so on. But it's still, you know, you still have an adventure. So I, I, I'm still quite interested in that that combination of, um, yeah, what are the differences between hiking and running? And But also, uh, uh, as we know, as ultramarathon runners, there is a fair bit of hiking involved. So it is always a bit of a hybrid. Um, but yeah, no, I had a I had a good adventure. Thank you. Yeah. And it's it's in, it's really interesting that point on hiking versus walking because I think we first met on on the spine didn't we and you know I'd done the Pennine Way probably probably as you had I, I'm, when I was really young like like when I was at school um really? so like you know 17 18 and I, I, I seem to remember it taking two weeks and being pretty tough you know at that but then you you take on something like the spine <laughs> it just I, I almost they they almost felt like completely separate things like they didn't uh, I could have been on different terrain almost they felt so different I, I I guess that's maybe how you felt with the coast to coast sort of thing it's just the speed at which you go it just has a, a huge effect on how you perceive the kind of terrain I guess yes absolutely um I remember when I sort of started out in 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 I suppose trail running or, or whatever we want to call it and I felt this guilt actually of kind of rushing through, you know, beautiful places. And and I kind of had this sense of why am I rushing through here? Like I could spend an hour here. Um, but someone, a, a good fell runner I was chatting to made a good point and he said, well, you know, fair enough. But if, but if you run, you, you, you go twice as far and see twice as much in the same, the same time scale. Um, and I don't think one is better than the other. I mean, like you, I'm a parent now. So, I mean, being away from, I, I don't don't know how many national trails I've I've run now, but but you know four or five of them. Um, you know I can do that in a few days, whereas hiking, like you say, the Pennine Way, it's two it's two weeks. And I don't really want to be away from my kids for two weeks, um, but I can go and do the same trail in two days, um, which is a bit yeah. I would say to most people, maybe even do both if if that catches your fancy. So you know it was nice that I had already explored it as a, as a walker, but even then. I was never that le leisurely anyway. I was sort of competitive about it, which is a bit, almost a bit embarrassed of that now. But like, I think in the guidebook, it said that, I don't know, most people do it in 12 days or something, the, the coast to coast. And I, so I was like, right, I'm going to do it in 10. So <laughs> like, and no one cared. This is before social media as well. So, you know, there was no humble bragging. No one cared. I think I told, you know, my, my, my wife and my parents and they were like, oh, well done. You know, they didn't care. Um, so I already had, I already quite liked the idea I suppose of doing it I, I don't know a bit for something about suffering a bit <laughs> unnecessarily um appeals to me <laughs> yeah. um but yeah I still love the I think what I love as well is when you when you run when you push yourself a bit more you are more emotional I think you you, you know you rub yourself a bit rawer and therefore and I see more sunrises and more sunsets but then also the change of the weather the change of landscape I do think you're more not always but sometimes more sort of emotionally entwined with it like you're more thrilled that, that you're now going downhill or that I don't know or that especially the sunrises you know I see more sunrises and 
they will always lift me. So yeah, you're, you're definitely, there's some advantages to, 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 to moving quicker, I would say. Um, but yeah, you don't, you find a beautiful spot and instead of hanging around and having your lunch there for an hour, you, you do carry on. Um, but no, it's interesting, it's interesting. Yeah, I never, until I'd done a ultra, I'd never realised that actually the old uh, adage, the darkest part of night is just before dawn is, is, is actually true. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's a real thing. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, I must admit, the whole sort of fastest known time kind of thing had, had it was sort of on my radar but um and I don't know if this is right but it seems to have sort of really taken off recently you know in no small part to you know the stuff that you and others have been doing I just was sort of wanted to get your perspective on that you know and I guess you know being quite a big part of that um why why you think it has sort of taken off so much um yeah well, I've just, uh, if I could do, sh you know, shameless, shameless book plug time. Um, I've got, I've just got a, a book has just come out um, called In It For The Long Run. And I did, I really wanted to look into the history a bit um, of, I suppose, what the Americans call fastest known times and what we've tended to just call records. And, and in Britain, we've actually got a really long history of it. Um, I mean, you can like, trace it all the way back almost to the Greeks as well. And, and um, you know, the famous kind of marathon story. I mean, um, Back then, runners were often employed as runners to be messengers, um, but they were off doing, you could say they were off doing FKTs all the time. You know, they were, they were running 30 miles with a message. Um, it wasn't an organised race. All right, slightly different. They were employed to do it. But, you know, that was still a fairly commonplace part of, you know, part of um, culture then. Um, and definitely in the Lake District here, for, for over 100 years now, certainly the, the idea of a 24 hour challenge has been has been. I guess the popularity changes through the decades, but it's been there for a long time. Um, I forget the the year, but um, it's in my book. It's, you know, 18 something people first started doing sort of 24 hour challenges. How many fells could you get up in 24 hours? And over time, that's become the Bob Graham, Bob yeah. Graham round. Uh, but also there is a separate 24 hour sort of challenge still, which, which was only, you know, broken again last year by, by, by my, my friend, Kim Collison. Um, so we have we I think I think throughout human history there's and, and we had this wonderful pedestrianism era. Um, I don't know people don't I, this isn't as celebrated as much as it should be I think but you had these amazing athletes like um, well shown almost um, like sort of Captain Captain Barkley um, and there were some Scandinavians as well and they would do things like um, and it, and it took off in America um, they would like take a load of bets of whether they could run from sort of Paris to Moscow in a, in a certain time time frame. Um, and and if they did it, you know, they got all the they got all the money. And if they didn't, they you know, they, I think they had to pay, or you know, they, they lost the bets. Um, and even back then, though, that you know, there was no Strava and no GPS tracking, so there, there was a bit of skullduggery at times. Um, <laughs> but we've got this quite long history of these sorts of things. Um, and but yes, when when lockdown came along last year, wiped out most events, certainly in in Britain, Europe, America. Um, I think for a lot of us. Who, who enjoy doing that we just kind of thought well what, what can I do that's not an event uh, and so last year especially and there's a whole book on it uh, broken by by Ali Bevan um yes yeah, so, so it, it wasn't just I, th I think elite runners you know um I, I coach people now and like you know a lot of them were out doing um some fastest known times or even some sort of only known times or or um or even sort of just Strava segments you know it might be 10 10 15 miles or something um but that really took off. I think it was to do with the lockdown, but there was a sort of, what's the word? Um, I don't know. Yeah, everyone was feeding off each other a bit, I, I think. And it was all really exciting. There seemed to be big records being broken every week. Um, and it's been a bit like that this year. As we're talking, actually, I, I believe Sabrina Virgie should be finishing the uh, the Wainwrights in the Lake District, which is an absolute epic challenge. And she, she probably looks like she's going to break the overall record, which is phenomenal. Um, and I think, yeah, people get inspired and go and try something themselves. So it's, um, yeah, it's really exciting. And always when something sort of crops up like that, um, you know, and I think you touched on this slightly earlier with, you, you know, your answer to uh, one of the other questions. But, you know, whenever ever something pops up, there's also the sort of reactionary force of people like saying, wow, you know, why don't you just take, we need a slowest known time or, you know, why don't you just take your time? And, you know, I'm always like, well, you know, it's all just different types of the same thing and you can't it's impossible to be in love with say hiking and and not see this as just another form of that endeavor uh that that's my take on it how do you sort of 
kind of respond to people like, oh, just, you know, why, why, this, why, or why all this sort of, why has everything got to be so competitive? You know? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it absolutely doesn't doesn't have to be at all, and and I guess whatever suits to me, it's about adventure. I love the word adventure, um, and it's I, I suppose it's what sort of what sort of adventure do you want to have? You know, if you've got two, three, four, five weeks, you know, six weeks for the the, the Southwest Coast Path, if you've got that time available, you know, go go and have that type of adventure. If if you're more I don't know more competitive or athletically minded, and maybe you've only got a week or half a week to spare um you know try something else it's all it's all to me it's part of the same thing and 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 like us like we say it, it's often a combination of running and walking to be honest um and and in all cases it's you know it's about being outdoors about being challenged physically a little bit about wildlife when we see it and, and, and nature and sunsets and sunrises and to me it's it's fairly similar um but yeah just just do what do what suits you and i i, I don't go around Looking at other people's thing, other people's adventures, and, and I don't know, judging them, and, and, and what about me? And I, I don't really mind if anyone criticizes me. It's fine. I'm happy. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't know why. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't hear much negativity about all that. So I, 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 I yeah, I don't, I don't. Um, I wouldn't waste it. I wouldn't. I'd recommend people don't waste their time on it. Um, <laughs> it's, um, oh, I can, yeah, yeah, totally I agree. And how do you? How? I guess how does you know that one of the natures of it being a competitive thing is that records are set and broken all the time but just given the sheer amount of kind of I guess uh, physical and emotional involvement that goes into kind of planning and achieving a record does it does I mean how does it f kind of feel when that record then then goes uh, is that is that sorry if that's <laughs> <laughs> thanks a lot you, you, uh, yeah but I guess you know just I'm just conscious of you know how much preparation goes into these things do you just see it as all part of the game and you know um I think you know most elite athletes say well you know records are all there to be broken and it's all good is do you subscribe to that kind of viewpoint or it, does it is there a little bit where you're like oh god you know <laughs> yeah I've got to go back and break that record again now or do you just think now you know I've been there once you know I've, I've done it go on to something else i yeah I'm not, I'm not gonna lie it's not you know no one likes regardless of what they say publicly no one likes to lose a record um and uh, yeah I haven't this whole spell I've I've taken some on some new records but I've lost I've lost uh, maybe half of the game last years I've lost because everyone's out going for records um and the big one you may be referring to was yeah I, I broke the, the Penang Way record last year which was it felt like a sort of you know almost a lifetime achievement for me it was um yeah, almost my biggest moment in in running, and and um, yeah, the rascal, the the American rascal John Kelly, who lives in the next county to me, um, uh, went and went and absolutely smashed it th this year, which was which was humbling, if I'm honest, humbling but inspiring as well. Um, and yeah, I didn't enjoy that. <laughs> I mean, I didn't I didn't sit there drinking whiskey long into the night for, for or, or anything. You know, when it when it's over two or three days, I guess you get the idea at least. You you have to start going okay. If this carries on, I'm I'm not the holder for much longer. Um, and I actually put on Twitter, I think, near the time, I've got about an hour left of being the record holder. What shall I? What do I do with it? What do I do with this last hour? Um, I can't really remember the replies, but they were quite entertaining. And I was trying, you know, I was trying to um, appeal to Boris Johnson for an extra lockdown, or or maybe get the uh, immigration services to check on John's uh, residency status. Um, yeah, any uh, weather, bad weather. I was, try I was trying everything I could, but yeah, he was he was too good for it all. Um, so yeah, you don't enjoy it. And also, yeah, last year I lost the, the Southwest Coast Path record, which I was, you know, pretty pleased with. Um, and I'd had for about four years. Um, and yeah, a guy called Christian Morgan, Morgan beat that. Um, but yeah, so you don't enjoy it. And I think in my book, I put that it was a bit like seeing your, seeing your house being burgled and burgled in slow motion and you can't really do much about it. Um, but yeah, it's just part, it is part of the game and your records, the records that you're just they're on loan to you you know you don't own them you just have them for a bit and then you have to pass them on um and hopefully you know hopefully you do, you do that in good spirit um and so yeah you'd rather not give them up but it, it's part of the game it's almost inevitable for most of the records um but i think yeah someone asked me a similar question once and it's like does it detract from sort of the experience you had and i think it really it really shouldn't you know like i still had in it on all those those outings those adventures i still had a a brilliant time a tough time but a brilliant time and they're all really satisfying and just because someone else does something differently at a different point i shouldn't start thinking of that differently i don't think um 
so no it doesn't it doesn't doesn't really change anything for me um but yeah some of them and it depends on the records some of them i feel very tempted to to try and get them back and some of them uh for various reasons not there's just not an urge there sometimes you can't explain it um but if i'm honest like the southwest coast path i mean it's 11 days so it's it's a lot of time and and you know and again being away from my kids that long um it's just a lot of time uh so i that one doesn't call at me at the moment um but yeah it's all part of the game excellent excellent and uh I can't believe we've spoken for 20 minutes and we haven't got to the Cape Roth Trail yet. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I suppose, yeah, I mean, I suppose that that of all the trails, you know, that's the one that's closest to my heart. And so I, I guess, I, you know, just off the bat, I was wondering, you know, what was it that attracted you to that trail? And you just maybe say a little bit about, you know, what some of the some of the process that went went into kind of pre preparing for that. Yeah, we were, um, if I'm totally honest, it was me and my good friends, Matt, Matt and Ellie Green from Summit Fever Media. We were we were sitting around one day waiting for the weather to change to, to do a bit of filming. And and we knew we had this idea of coming up with a British winter adventure. Um, and Ellie straight away said, Cape Wrath and winter. And because we they, they had worked on the race as the, the ultra, the ultra marathon on it, the Cape Wrath Ultra. And so they knew it a bit and how, how rugged and how remote it was. And as soon as she said that, we all went, yes. And we got got my good friend Beth Pascal involved. Uh, I think um, so it was it was my friends. It was their idea. But straight away, it's one of those. Yes, that's the one. Um, and I think it's that remoteness. It's got the reputation for I mean, you just look at the map and, and you know, there aren't many. There aren't all that many people live up there. There aren't many roads. So so to find that remoteness in Britain, it, even if at the time for me, that was only sort of guessing what it might be like. Um, Matt and Ellie knew it. Yeah, it was the remoteness, the ruggedness, the wildness, getting away from it all, but still in Britain, you know, and I do love that idea of celebrating Britain a bit. Sometimes we think to get away to wilderness, you know, we have to go to, I don't know, Canada or or or, or, or something. Um, but and yeah, that is wilder than Britain, let's be honest, because, it, you know, but but you can still get these remote wild experiences in Britain. Um, and that's really, really rewarding. Um, and I suppose we had that winter idea just to make a bit more adventure. Um, and that just felt compelling. We didn't even know. I mean, I know you've walked it, hiked it in the winter, and I've seen some stunning pictures. But we didn't know anyone had sort of run it in the winter. Um, in the end, the weather was actually really good to us. There was a tiny bit of snow, like half an hour of snow. But other than that, I don't think we had any rain either. Um, but actually, just beforehand, I was quite frightened. Um, if I'm honest, yeah, the river crossings. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd been warned by some people. Um, Shane only actually who, who runs the um, organizes the Cape Wrath Ultra and possibly you I, I can't quite remember but yeah the idea that the river crossings there could really sort of swell up and become you know the same height as us um, and I yeah I, I believe the the standard advice is not to not to cross a river that that's deeper than uh, you are um, I believe it's even you know yeah if it's beyond your waist it's probably not really smart either so we were up there the day before we were going to start and, and a local Maybe he was just trying to scare the tourists, but he said, um, you know, if you're coming up here tomorrow, bring a body, bring a body bag. And we were like, oh, uh, um, and there is a website. I forget the name, but it's Scottish Water or something. You can you can actually see pretty much live time river, river yeah. depth. Um, and it, it was pretty much right. There was a river that was almost two meters that we were going to cross soon. Um, and it was like, oh, hmm. Yeah, this is maybe a bit more wild and remote than <laughs> You know, I mean, I mean, that's the glorious thing about wilder areas. You know, you can't control how wild necessarily. Um, but we did all we did was delay it by one day and, and the weather had changed of it and it washed through. And actually, I don't think we ever went in water above our knees. So actually, it was it was fine in the end. But that was, you know, it, you know, a bit hairy, to be honest. Um, but. I mean, we were going in winter, we didn't have the snowy sort of landscapes we maybe hoped for, but it did. The downside was. You know, it was it was dark quite a lot. You know, it's Scotland, northern Scotland. Um, and so, yeah, there's a little bit of regret of we were probably going through some stunning places. Well, we definitely were. And, you know, you still have an experience there of wildness with the weather and, and the remoteness and so on. And, um, you know, maybe maybe catching a catching a stag in the dark with your up with your head torch. You know, those sorts of moments. Um, but you couldn't really see the scenery in the nighttime. But, we, you know, I don't think we ever really um, stopped in daylight. So, so we made the most of the daylight, too. But um, yeah and and also all five hours of it 
Yeah, yeah. But yeah, just what an adventure. I mean, I think in my book, I pretty much say that's kind of my, kind of my, almost my favourite sort of FKT record sort of long distance run experience, I, I think, in that just the sense of adventure, we we kind of, you know, we were pushing to break a record, but with the greatest respect, um, you know, I guess we both felt it was a record that wasn't, um, I don't know, it would never came down to, oh, you know, it wasn't that tight for us. Um, I think it was really set by sort of a fast, a fast packer you, you, rather than a runner, so, you know, carrying a bit more kit. So, so the record element was very much secondary to let's go and have an adventure on this. Experience, yeah. 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 And, and we did, you know, we did cut back on the sleep to, to try and do it quickly, but overall it was just like, just this remote experience to be had in Britain, um, which was, yeah, wonderful, really. And yeah, I mean, the, the winter is a whole nother dimension there. I mean, I have had the snow bit and that, that brings its own challenges. <laughs> but, I've seen some of you know, photos, yeah. But also, I suppose, you know, um, it, it kind of freezes over the some of the bogs, which is... Uh, <laughs> Which is also, you know, so it's, it's all swings and roundabouts. And I think the river crossings is a really good point because it's it, it's really hard to advise people on that because it's just so unpredictable and it can change in hours, both for the better or for the worse. So um, uh, yeah, it is a really unpredictable aspect of it. And I, I think it just adds to the sort of kind of frisson of, of danger, essentially, because, you know, if you get a, you know, if you get a bad river crossing wrong, you you know, you can end up in a really bad way so um just I guess just maybe if you could just kind of sketch out how it panned out on the ground you know broadly uh some of the sections that you ran it um you know and you know what were what, what the bits that really stood out to you um uh, from the from the sections yes now it was it was two or three years ago but I have I do have the map up on your website here to try and remember the uh <laughs> names um now i i remember yeah starting off we started off at, at sort of dawn which must have been in, in scotland in, in in winter maybe sort of eight o'clock or something um yeah. from yeah getting the ferry across from fort william and that that was quite an exciting start you know although you're not going over to another island really like it's it's quite an exciting feeling starting off that way um so you've already got that nice and where it was, I don't know, it's a 10 minute ride or something. Um, yeah, it's not long, is it? And but I, uh, it just feels uh, like you're getting into something, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, it's, it's like, okay, we're we're on it now. <laughs> yeah, and you feel like you're almost, you know, if you, if your if your imagination's ramping up a bit, which it was, you almost feel like you're, you know, leaving civilization to go to somewhere a bit wilder. Um, and then I remember those, yeah, I remember those early miles. Of course, they're they're some of the easiest, of course. Well, I, I suppose while you were adjust to the right pacing for you and get used to that backpack um i remember some long golden glens early on and of course the the um the harry potter is it the harry potter oh, yeah. viaduct um it is, I'm not huge, yes yeah my wife and my children now are massive harry potter fans so i think i was able to take a photo of that and send it home and that that, that was the <laughs> most interesting part of it for them they, they weren't interested after that um <laughs> Now what we what we found what our first big difficulty was um, yeah so I remember some lovely lovely glens and and just we had lovely light when it when it was light um, and and yeah Summit Fever Media did make some daily videos which which um, I'll send you some links to if you don't have them just they got the drone up and just got some lovely footage of these golden glens um, and you just wouldn't you just wouldn't see anyone um, and what else to remember about that first that first day. I should just say that um, I, I know Matt and Ellie. Uh, they made, I think, they made all those daily videos into one one film, which is available on Vimeo. So, I'll what I'll do is I'll stick a link in the video description when this goes up on YouTube, and um, people can go there. And I, I think it's a couple of pounds or something. But I, it, I've, I've watched it, and it's a fantastic it's a fantastic watch. And to kind of see you guys going through that country is just uh, just lovely. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll do all of oh, that. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, and I think partly there was, although we had limited daylight, they were yeah really lucky with the the actual lighting, you know, some late afternoon light and stuff that was just just looks golden. Um, so and and so we had a lovely. I think the first day was was wonderful overall. Um, and but but there was already that hint that the terrain is is 
harder going. You know, some there are some spells, you know, and you warn in your book, there are some spells where it's really good trail and you can move quite well. And then you'll go bump into, you know, something else that's so much slower. Um, and I think at one point I say something like, you know, a, a Scott a mile up here is worth two or three down in England or something. Um, and so, so true. I'll, try, I'll, I'll try and keep it in um, in rough chronological order. But we had the bodies for our for running it. The bodies weren't sp spaced brilliantly for us. So we, we, we sort of I think we had the option of a body at about nine or nine at night. But we decided that was a bit too soon. So so we went on through the night and then the first body we came to um was about 12 or, or about lunchtime now I'm, i've forgotten the name of it but it's that white white just in magnificent surroundings it's a white bothy um maybe they're all white if you remember but um i'm gonna forget the name unfortunately is it, but, one in the, is it uh at the end of uh, a lock and uh is it uh, you don't or... go to the lock yourself but it's meant to be the remotest in britain apparently or... oh sully's yeah sully's bothy yeah it's that's like it's right. in the middle of nowhere yeah it's that's a stunning place well, it's yeah, just... so... You know, you and if and that's one of those moments where you think, I wish I was hiking this and I had more time because I would stay here all day and all night. Um, you know, cozy little bothy, um, oh, just mountains, snow, snow, snow dusted mountains, and just no one else around. Um, and just by a lovely river, you know, lovely cool water to to drink. And um, but of course, you know, we were on a bit of a schedule. So and but I remember the terrain after that being really tough, actually, kind of like you say, a little bit frozen, but actually. If, if your foot sort of went through it, then it was boggy underneath. And I was quite pleased to have have, have trekking poles for that. Um, and then and then not long after that, actually, I, I made a really stupid mistake, which was um, I think Beth was sort of contouring up. She was most in charge of the nav because she's just a bit smarter than me. And she was kind of contouring up. And I told myself I didn't really need to contour up. I thought I could just contour around and meet around the corner, you know, around the corner of a mountain. Um, and then and then suddenly she wasn't there. And yeah, she couldn't see me, I couldn't see her. And then it's the classic, do you wait or do you try and find them? Um, so, so I went to try and find her. I think I waited for a bit and then tried to find her. Um, and we were both actually blowing our whistles and we couldn't, we couldn't, it was daylight. It wasn't that panicky, but you could see how it could get panicky. Yeah. So we lost each other for 10 or 20 minutes. Um, and luckily, yeah, good weather, daylight, not really a drama, but it could have been just that simple sort of my little tired stubbornness of deciding actually I don't need to go up that high. Um, but he, but he, when we were reunited and I apologised profusely, um, it carried on if I remember being, well, I think we got some good trail after that, but it carried on being, it just all felt like golden, you know, had this long grass, you know, lovely light. Um, and then I think, yeah, and then we got to, again, I'm really sorry, we got to a, a small village and there was a pub and, and it was open. And it was only one of the two times that we could get into like a, a civilized establishment. Um, <laughs> we went into the pub and I remember we, you know, the about three or three or four locals there just looking at us going, what are the, you know, what are these things? Um, what are these guys doing? Yeah. Yeah. It must be about three in the afternoon by then. And we've been going, you know, nearly, 30, you know, 30 hours or so. Um, I don't know how bad we smelt, um, but we, we cleaned the pub out of sort of um, double deckers and crisps. Um, I both sat there with like a pint of lemonade and a big pot of tea and and we, we were in there for a while it was hard to leave it was hard to leave yeah yeah um you know we we had, and I asked for uh, I think salt and salt and onion crisps I asked for um which which, which don't exist I believe um and then <laughs> I was quite tired but yeah it was help, helped that sense of who are these people you know um and then we moved on an hour or two later there was there was a bothy so our first our first sleep and again, I'm sorry, I have done a write up. Um, I, I, I could... Salt and onion crisps is um, is 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 uh, far far better than what one of my mates asked for in a remote pub. Uh, he he he, ordered, he went to the bar and ordered a Bell's and Coke. <laughs> and no word of a lie, there must have been 300 single malt whiskies around the top of this bar. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can describe the look on the uh, barman's face uh, as a like snack bastard. <laughs> Bells and Coke, <laughs> the world's finest selection of more whiskey. Yeah. Um, yeah, I imagine that's probably somewhere like Strathcarran or Kinlochu. Those are the sort of main kind of, well, I say, say sort of centers of civilization, you know, actually places where there are stuff. Um, yeah, so it's probably what 
one of those two. I'm, I'm guessing. They both sound familiar. Yes, I might, I might, uh, I might try and pop open the, the story I wrote if I can find it. Um, but yeah, then then there was a Bothy an hour or two later, and we and we settled in. I think we were thrilled. There was a bit of firewood in there, but we didn't sleep. We didn't sleep well. Uh, we were. I think the big mistake I certainly made was yeah being too. I do get quite sort of um, weight you know obsessed with the weight of things and I, I my sleeping mat wasn't good enough it was you know you're on a wooden floor uh and like yeah I wasn't sleeping well and and when you were only getting very limited sleep I think we both woke up you know we were aiming for maybe three hours sleep and we both woke up several times and were pretty unhappy with the sleep we'd had um but yeah we had a couple of meals in there you know either side of the the, the sleep and then we went back out I think at like 10 or 11 at night which is a difficult time to get going actually um but you know yeah we were we were going to try and set a record um and yeah it was a lovely evening I remember it, it was I think quite starry and, and and good temperatures and 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 you just got this sense as well even though you couldn't really see a lot you you know you got this sense that you're in a big big open space and and you're on maybe some mountainous terrain and there's quite a good trail if I remember for a, for quite a while um and then we had done some food drops We'd actually spent a day driving the day before uh, and deposited four or five boxes of food up ahead. Um, so that meant that meant we were sort of uh, what you call self-supported rather than unsupported. Yeah, yeah. Um, and also, yeah, and also in the categories, if you're unsupported, you wouldn't have been able to go in those in the cafe or or, or, or the sorry, the pub or the cafe we saw later on. Um, so, we, yeah, we got our first food drop, I think, which was a big moment. And you can sort of sit there and tuck into your favourite chocolate bars, which was nice. Yes. Yeah, that was very nice. Um, and what happened? So, I mean, um, well, I mean, I guess, you know, I, I, I know what it's like, you know, these when, when you do things like that and, uh, you know, with the passage of time, you know, it, it, there is a tendency for these things to blur into one. But, I mean, I guess uh, I'm interested in, you know, what was the... What was the most unexpected aspect of the trail versus, you know, obviously when you plan these things, you're reading guidebooks, you know, you're looking at maps. What would you say was the biggest um, thing that stood out of like, OK, this is this this is not what I was expecting or this is this is different, either, I guess, better or, or worse? I think it was. I think although your guidebook does warn of it, I think it was it was the roughness of the terrain. Um, I especially remember round the back of round the back of Torridon. <laughs> uh, you're basically like a train, uh, and you, and at the, first, at the beginning you don't know exactly what that means, but by the about the middle of the of, of the run, yeah, you're aware that, <laughs> that that that's what you might call classic British understatement. Uh, of, um, um, <laughs> Uh, and you did actually advise, I think I did. I, you know, we were quite careful with the route to make it, you know, if other people want to go for a record or whatever, we want people to be doing the same, the same route. Otherwise, it will get a bit messy. Um, but you did advise if there was one bit to skip. I think you said, um, you know, there's an alternative route that's a bit better than going back. But we, we felt we should stick to the route in your guidebook. Um, and it was, yeah, really rough around the back of there. You go up on quite a nice trail. You get to a waterfall. And this is about three or four in the morning as well. So you're not exactly at your best. And then, and then the, there's just no path or no path that we could find. And it's it's rocks and heather, not just rocks, big boulders and big heather. Um, so you're put, constantly putting your foot down into things that you've no idea what's there. And also you're looking for a trail as well. It gets no worse and worse there. and worse, doesn't it? It starts yeah. off, it just lulls you into this false sense of security. And then it's just, yeah, uh, I mean, I think the guides had five editions now. And every edition I kind of at make the caveat slightly stronger but I've, I've, I've thought a couple of times actually look should I just take that section out altogether and just but I always come back to the fact is like when you get to sort of just around the back of Ben I that vista you get over Torridon I, I think it's probably one of the best views on the entire I mean whether or not you had the view but and also I guess if you're in low cloud you're probably cursing me like I've got none of the benefits of this but like when you get that view, I think it's one of the most superlative mountain experiences I've probably ever had, bar none. And that's that's why I've kind of always, I've always been sort of, ah, oh, take it out. And then I'm like, no, nope, I'm just going to leave it in and say it's really, just be prepared. It's really bad. So if you don't want that, just go go down the road. 
<laughs> no, I, th I think you should leave it in. And, and I must admit, the, pretty much the only bit of the trail I knew was I had visited the Torridon region before. So, so in my head, although it was dark for us, I had this concept of, of what it might what it might be looking like for yeah. us. Um, but also, you know, it gave us a bit of a story. Well, not much of a story to tell, but at least this kind of spell, you know, added to our sense of adventure, added to our sense of achievement, added to this sense of kind of that was really tough back there. And, and of course, the next bit, you know, doesn't feel so tough because you just had. Um, and I think Beth did say it was the slowest mile or two of her entire life or at least her running life. Um, it was tough. Yeah, it was really tough. But then, yeah, you, you get through it. And um, and yeah, we didn't have the views, sadly. But I remember good trails after that and maybe another. Maybe another uh, food stop. I can't remember. It is blending into one a bit, but um, yeah, the further north you went, the more the more remote it felt. And it was um, and often even when you did get to a village, it might be dark and totally quiet and there's nothing there for you. Um, ah, yeah, it was just it was just fantastic. And then towards the end yeah we got to no, I remember staying in another body I do have the bodies written down somewhere but um there was one that had mattresses and we were just I, overcome with joy um and we had a good sleep there um they were the sort of mattresses that you know if that was a hotel you'd walk out of the hotel in disgust yeah yeah but you take it yeah oh yeah I mean but but it was you know it meant we could sleep and, and I think you know for the, one of the first times in my life I pressed snooze on an alarm you know um <laughs> Uh, and we were very, very happy. Um, and yeah, I mean, it was it was tough, but I think we were we were always going to carry on. And and yeah, more tough terrain in the in the in the north, if I remember. Yeah. And yeah, I would make the constant mistake of thinking, okay, that's ten miles away. That's going to take you <laughs> two to three hours. And sometimes it did, and sometimes it was much much longer than that. So it's I would say advice on mindset is is not to sort of almost not to plan too far ahead in terms of I mean it's worth planning ahead if you've got limited food and stuff and where you're going to get to but be be relaxed about how many hours something might take you because it was um you know it I it would get me um not in a massive sulk but I would get disheartened when it was like oh my god this is taking so much longer um so if once I that, yeah I, I mean I think that's the um probably the biggest mistake that I hear about is people planning too ambitious a kind of schedule and then just trying to you try and stick to it because okay I've got this amount of days and you know you, you, your feet end up pretty wrecked so I'm going to ask you about the feet in a second but uh, you know and then you know you just fall behind and then that affects you mentally and you sort of beating yourself up and so I, I think that probably as you said the, the best piece of advice is just to build in a you know flexibility for yourself to so you can have a bad day and you know I guess this doesn't apply if you're going for a record or whatever but if you're just walking the trail you know um just have that flexibility because it, it, it the ground is, is is so much rougher than it's really possible to describe and you compare it to something like the you know the um, west highland way you know where it's like a motorway in comparison so mm. yeah so i mean talk to me about your feet how do they how do they hold up because they take a pounding they do but but i th i feel like both our feet fairly fair fared fairly well um I think I can't remember what Beth wore. Um, I mean, I am sponsored, you know, I am sponsored by Innovate and I did wear, I think I wore um, uh, cross talon ultras, which are designed for kind of longer distances with some decent grip for mud. Um, and then they're, they're quite wide as well. So if there is a bit of foot, foot swelling, uh, which I don't think I had, but, but you know, there should be a bit of space. Um, and I'm pretty sure I wore one pair of waterproof socks. Um, and and that was pretty good actually. I don't think I had a significant blister, or you know, only maybe only if I had a tiny one, I'd put a plaster on it, it was all right. So I wonder if almost, of course, because we were only doing it for four or five days, of course, there's almost less chance of blisters in a way, yeah, yeah. although you don't really have the long rests in between. It's difficult less to know. Less as well, I suppose. Yeah, I think it's yeah. the backpacking that maybe, like yeah, it's the immersion. I think that also you know, in and out of water and bogs the whole time. That's tricky. Um, yeah, so I, I think I feel like we got a bit, well, maybe a bit lucky bit of experience, but it also might have been tiny. Like you say, some of the bogs might not have been as bad as they can be. Um, yeah, we I think we both fed pretty well. We both did get some tendonitis, uh, like down the front of our right shins, which um, I've, I've I don't know if you've also had it like the spine race and so on. Um, I tend to get that on on multi day things. It's not horrendous, a little bit painful, but you know, and, and you you're, you're fine a week after. Um, 
but that was that could have been I don't know I think that was related well time on feet but just yeah the rough terrain pulling your feet out of mud sometimes I do remember the last few miles being tough actually over the um <laughs> Yeah. over those moors yeah. yeah i mean yeah there's there's no paths there are there um no yes yeah, so i was going to ask you about that the, you know <laughs> you get to sandwood bay and you kind of like yes i'm there and then you know like, nope it's got a sting in the tail <laughs> it took a lot longer that last bit but but yeah the village just before there as well there is a village and we did get into a cafe there which was quite a weird experience we have been out you know we had seen matt and ellie once you know a few times but like we hadn't seen any civilization for what felt like a really long time and then we went into the, this one cafe was open we, and we actually wanted to take away but they invited us in and you felt really strange in there because everything was clean and and yeah. you know well just clean and tidy and we felt very sort of smelly and dirty and sat there very self-consciously but you know we had a big bowl of chips and a big mug of tea and that was incredible um but then yeah that those last few miles sandwood bay was gorgeous but that I think it was just the light was just going there. And then I just remember many hours of thinking, I'm sure we're meant to be nearly here. And and just this, is it Pete? Is it Pete up there? But it's like yeah. really just these real troughs and um and I yeah. Kind of like Kinder a bit like Kinder Scout, isn't it? It's yeah, um it's that on, kind of much know, longer fluffy, yeah, peaty, boggy, no track. Yeah. And, um, and we're in the dark as well. So it's yeah, it's just endless, yeah, really physically challenging, actually. Yeah. <laughs> So you got to what time did you get to the uh the lighthouse, the cave? I think I think it was five or six. It got it, it got dark. Um which I yeah, I don't know. I, mean, I guess it would have been nicer to finish in the light and, and get those cliff views and um and that sort of thing. But you know, yeah, it was one hell of an adventure and it, it sort of didn't stop there because getting away from Cape Wrath isn't isn't easy. In the um, winter, no, it's yes. not straightforward. <laughs> uh, did you? What did you do? Did you retrace your steps, or did you? Well, or did, where um, did you? I, um, yeah. So we we were able to get a boat um, across. Ah, okay. But I think yeah, he 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 wasn't meant to go in in the darkness, so we had to wait. There were there was one sort of aborted effort to get away, and the and the sea was was too rough, so we sort of turned round. And stayed at the lighthouse overnight. I, I don't know if that's open to everyone. I don't know if that was them being specially kind because it was the winter and so on. Uh, no, you can you can stay there. They uh, okay. uh, yeah, it's open all year round. Yeah, I I actually arrived there on Christmas Day once. Um, wow. And his his wife had got is because the weather had been so cold. His wife had got stuck going for the Christmas turkey, and um, yeah, I arrived on Didn't Christmas that make the news? Day. It did make the news. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I didn't realise it had done until like a long time afterwards. And yeah, I got this little footnote, which is a a walker arrived on Christmas Day. <laughs> People must have thought, what madman that was. That was like super cold. Yeah, everything was frozen. I I I had to go back to Kinlockaby because yeah, there was no there was no way anyone was getting onto the Cape. But um, yeah, no, the the, the well, lighthouse. You had, to, is, you had to walk back down. I did. Yeah. For how many yeah, days? Was, uh, no, no, I just walked back to Kinlochby and got the bus from there. So ah, I, think, okay. I think it took, I think I did it in a day back from, um, I might have stopped at the Bothy. I don't know. I can't remember. It was, um, yeah, it wasn't, it, I, I, it was fine. Um, but yeah, no, the lighthouse is just this incredible resource. There's this amazing couple, John and Ange, who, who, who live there. And yeah, you know, you can stay there or, you know, they can camp. There's this little cafe. And it is genuinely open year round. So, um, yeah, so you stayed there the night in the end. Yes, in, indoors. Um, but really that sense of remoteness was really, you know, uh, we met a couple of other local people. What, what I think one was working at the lighthouse and doing the doing the driving and another guy who was, yeah, the, the sort of ferry, the ferry man. Um, but you could kind of tell they weren't used to having visitors at that at that side, end of the year um, in a good way, in that they were so interested in us and, and and we just shared stories for for hours actually it was um it was brilliant it was very much part of the adventure still um and you know yeah so remote up there I just can't imagine living up there um because yeah the one road isn't really a road it's a bumpy track um and it's like an hour uh, I think it's an hour or two an hour to the boat maybe and then that boat is is you know not running all year round and so on um and yeah internet reception on the whole route actually if I remember like I wasn't looking every hour or anything but most of the time we didn't have it. I think I t twice yeah, was yeah. able to send a quick message home. Um, maybe near, yeah, maybe near that village at the top. But um, 
that but that added you know wonderfully to the sense of remoteness that you couldn't really you know communicate that that was that was that was really nice um and yeah one adventure I, I think I used the word a bit a bit yeah it's maybe not my favorite word but but like I used the word I felt sort of a bit cleansed afterwards I think it was that break from screens that that break from civilization to an extent as, as much as you can in Britain um yeah it really was a you know a, a, as wild and remote as you can get in Britain and that was really really good feel a really really good feeling actually um yeah I still have really well hopefully it's obvious you're really fond memories of 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 it um and I think we didn't a lot of the time we didn't really think much about the record that was part of the element for us but we weren't thinking about that a lot you know it was more about yeah just the just the adventure just getting to the next the next place yeah and I think that's what what attracts so many people to it and certainly what attracted me to it as, as you say it's I think it's the probably about as remote as it's possible to get in in the United Kingdom and you know there are days when you're genuinely a day and a half two days away from a road let alone civilization which is yeah I think that's probably about as remote as you get in this country and that's kind of I guess part part of the whole allure of it is you you know you have to be very self-sufficient because you know there just isn't stuff there really yeah and I mean I don't know if I'm being sounding flippant or, or about it or not but we did have a you know we had a live tracker uh we had an extra safety sort of beacon um and we did have I, we did have Matt and Ellie there doing the filming um and they would maybe see us once or twice a day uh, so we had them as a as a safety net as well. So we were quite we were very safety conscious about it. Um, I mean, I do think I don't know what your view is, but you know, if you're relatively experienced at these sorts of things, um, you know, yeah, it, I, I think I think the key is to probably be self sufficient for you know for a you know a couple of d two or three days, maybe enough food for two or three days, I, I suppose. Um, I mean, there's there's a fair bit of there's enough water around if I remember. Um, and but yeah, <laughs> you would meet you would there certainly was yeah. <laughs> um, and you would meet people occasionally. I, we remember, I remember meeting a young gamekeeper quite late on, actually. And, he, you know, he was incredibly interested in what we were doing and, and really friendly and helpful. He instantly gave us his lunch. Like, he was like, yeah, have it, you know, without, we, maybe we just looked starving. <laughs> like have, starving dogs. Yes. <laughs> there is a chance that we just sort of, you know, I was drooling by the thought of <laughs> uh, sandwiches. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think that remoteness makes people more, I suppose, interested in each other, a bit more friendly and generous as well. Um, and and yeah, certainly at the lighthouse, they were they were incredibly kind to us. Um, um, yeah, way way beyond what was what was you know expected or or, or what they needed to do. Um, and and that that's that's quite nice as well to be reminded of that spirit of people as well. I think that. Yeah, I've definitely detected that, yeah, and also awesome. I think there's the fact uh, that the 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 stuff because there's so little stuff there the stuff that is there ten, tends to work you you know I, I've, I've several times like been stood on the side of this road like literally in the middle of nowhere waiting for a bus that was supposedly going to turn up and thinking this is never going to happen in a million years I'm still going to be stood here in five hours time and then like literally bang on time this little bus chugs into view and you're just like you know even when the road is like sheet ice you know there's you know, some of the we all like whoa <laughs> I, I guess just because there's nothing else you know the infrastructure that's there has to, has to kind of has to kind of work so uh, yeah I suppose yeah yeah so you do get an insight into these these wonderful little communities up there and I guess the characters and so on um although again we had less of that because it was winter I would say or maybe we had more because because people were less expecting to see people I suppose um um but yeah yeah wonderful wonderful experience yeah you're bringing it bringing it all back yeah ah well great yeah. well i'm conscious of uh of of your time and i just i guess just wanted to round off um i'll, I'll leave a link in the description to um to to your book which is amazon amazon obviously knows me so well it's already recommending it uh to me to uh in my uh recommendations so uh, uh they probably know me better than <laughs> <laughs> is 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 kind of uh, a bit scary but um that's out that's out now I'll, I'll leave a link to where people can buy it in the description and I guess just to finish you know a, a question as to what are the next challenges you've got coming up um yeah I, I I definitely I mean I mean I am yeah I'm signed up signed up for UTMB um like a lot of people I haven't done haven't done 
a race for quite a long time. Um, but it's uncertain whether we can get out there uh, for, for late August. So I don't really know whether that's going to happen for me. If not, I probably would do something similar again. I do love going on our on our national trails. I mean, I'm trying to be more conscious, I suppose, as well of my personal carbon footprint. So I'm not I'm not necessarily thinking of you know amazing European trails. I mean, it doesn't mean I'll never fly again or never travel again. You don't have to fly to Europe. Um, but I am really enjoying exploring Britain um, and 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 the wonderful yeah trail trails and adventures we have. Um, and yeah, there might be one or two trails I should I should revisit. Uh, and and but there might be some. I mean, there are definitely some trails I haven't, especially up in Scotland. Actually, there are some trails I haven't really um explored yet, and there's plenty of them. So um yeah, I guess that's a bit of a vague answer, but but maybe you Tim, if not if not more of the same, I suppose more of the same. More of the same. Fantastic. Well, thank thanks so much, Damon. Really um really lovely chatting to you, and I'm I'm, I'm sure people will really appreciate the kind of perspectives on the. Kate Roth Trail. So, um, well, yeah. thank you. And could I say, because you're too humble to do it, but thank you for your brilliant guidebook. Um, it was, um, yeah, I mean, it was spot on. Once we established what rough, rough terrain <laughs> meant, uh, rough trackless terrain. Once we knew, <laughs> once we knew what that really meant, um, uh, it was, it was, it was a, re- you know, a great help. Uh, really brought the trail to life. Um, so thank you. You know that, yeah, it, it was very much part of our experience was was reading ahead. What what's it going to be like? Um, I, I I must admit to my shame, um, I was so obsessed with weight that that I would actually cut the pages out once once we come to that section. So I do need to buy a fresh a fresh version of it. Um, I do I do have, I had the version on my phone as well. But yeah, we were so <laughs> obsessed that it was like I don't need those two pages now. Um, so I did. I did. I much as I loved your book, I was tearing it apart as I went, well, which, which I, I literally, literally tearing into it. Um, yes. Yeah. No. It's funny. I, I, I've started making these sort of some of these little video guides to the train, and I'm sort of giving giving the train a, a score out of ten. And uh, I think that's something I might kind of do in future editions of the guide because I suppose then everyone's got a different understanding of what a 10 is but um you know uh yeah you're right it's it's quite hard to it really is quite hard to sort of conceptualize in words just how rough some of the the ground is but um no thank you for that and uh, you know I'm, I'm just glad it was helpful and you know I continue to be amazed by all the sort of stories that you know people people get in touch with about about their experiences on the trail and it's just so sort of yeah it's humbling and um, gratifying that you know people people are getting you know the, the experience and passion that prompted me to write the guide is 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 not is not something that's just uh, just with me it's with many others as well so uh, yeah no no I mean for the Penang Way and and I love the Penang Way because it partly because of its history um, and and so on but but yeah I mean the Cape Rough I've got to be honest, it's it's much more of an adventure than the Penang Way, um, for for various reasons which we've probably gone through. But yeah, it's it's, I um, I guess I'm hesitating to say, is it my favourite trail in in Britain? I I would say almost like my experience on it was was my was my favourite sort of national trail experience. Sorry, it's not strictly a national trail, but but of the big sort of walks that we have, I think that was my favourite sort of running experience on a, on a, on one of our big walks. Um, yeah, I'd I'd say that. Yeah, yeah, good work. Amazing. Well, thanks so much, Demo, and really lovely chatting to you. And I'm I'm sure our paths will cross uh, at some point in the future. But all the yeah. very best with everything. Thank you very much. Cheers, Ian. Okay. Take care. I think is that, that worked? Yeah, yeah. I think it's worked. Yeah, yeah. You're recording this meeting. Make sure to let everyone know they're being recorded. Okay. Blah blah blah.